go. Eivor, good to see you. I am, uh, uh, did you want something, or? I was wondering. What's wrong? Bridget and I were thinking, with everything calming down the way it has, maybe you could find a spare moment then. You want to be married? Yes, uh, to each other. Yes, I imagined. Gunnar, to see you so happy has been a pleasure, and to marry you would be an honor. Shall I put out a call to any friends abroad? I'll be honest, Eivor. I came here with a lot of you, because nothing and no one kept me back there. The Raven Clan is all the family I need, and Bridget too. From all she said, she's better off here than with those she calls kin. Just a couple of foundlings we are. Then let's not bother with tradition. If you have your bride and your blade, we will see you wed. As Jarl, I do it gladly. About you and Bridget, when do you wish to be wed? The sooner I can make her my wife, the happier I will be. But we are fine to wait until everything has settled here. Enough waiting. Cool your forge and cover your anvil. Let's get you married. Wonderful. Shall we gather everyone? Gather your wife and your courage. I will bring the people together. I am honored to stand before you, Gunnar, Bridget, on this bountiful day. To celebrate the strength of your bond and to see you wed. I am in witness of a love that inspires and empowers. I invite you now to speak your vows. To you, my darling Bridget, I offer this blade, forged in flames that burn as brightly as my heart does for you. A blade as sharp as your wit, as glinting as your beauty. May it sing through the air as sweetly as your voice meets my ears. Dio, see you did carry to Gunnar. To never am Lucas, would be the daughter he to tea and Harriet. And I, you, I give you my sword and my promise that I will stand at your side forever. Heed for the privilege of future and heed, and the sword tawaloch in hope, a premonition. On the mount of scrying a foresight, para toivi a sweeping adventure meeting to. Your enoid will demarash. A dean as strong, a buratiki. A quell as he fears, but calon, and head van durati. Such poetry, oh dear. You make me cry, my love. Let his head van even gillin, troboid and beyond. I offer you this ring. Take yours in kind. I will wear it with pride and honor, warmed by the love of so perfect a lady. And I whisk of a Valkalon, adoration of feed and bith. This is the greatest day of my life. Embrace me, my love. <laughs> With our couple now bonded in matrimony, now we drink.
It is a strange feeling, brother. Weddings are the beginning of something, but this feels like something of an end. The first happy union in our home. We have matured into something greater. So yes, a beginning and an end, I think. And how are the marriage customs in your country, Hytham? Something like this? Like this in all the most important ways. There are smiles, cheers, and warm embraces. All that is needed, I think. Gunner, you old trout. You're a married man. Never thought I would see the day. Nor did I. And not for lack of trying. Alvis, I'm surprised you did not serenade the bride and groom with a verse or two. Oh, I wished to, I did. But all that came to me were insults and jibes. Another time, I think. Volka, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. My visions have lessened of late, and I... Well, I find it hard to explain how different I feel. Grounded. Unified. At peace. That is good to hear, Eivor. Very good to hear. Bridget, I gift you a formal welcome to our clan and our family. You are a fine addition to Gunnar's life and to ours. Dear Javier, I couldn't be more happy to Boma. Hoping now that he wash and it keeps me sure that he is. Yes, of course. I, uh... As I say, it is wonderful to have you. You have been among us for quite some time, Redder. Are you ready to settle? Make a home here? For a year or two, perhaps. But I am not the settling kind. I am a wanderer, always searching, never finding. Maybe one day. Randvi, saw you looking a little lonely. Thought I might come and join you. How nice. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I never thought I would see gruff old Gunnar so enraptured by a woman. Enraptured by anything, for that matter. He's a hard one to read, but I am pleased for him, and for this day of rest and respite. After everything, a few days of feasting will do the people some good. They need this. They do. Will you walk with me? Anywhere. Lead on. Something has been on my mind for some time. I am no seer, but I foresaw this day long ago. Not Gunnar's marriage, but our situation. Our success. How do you mean, our success? I mean to say that I saw our settlement flourishing, through our victories in war and in diplomacy. And from the day we set out from Norway, I knew that you would make a fitter leader than Sigurd. It was never in his character to lead. It was always within yours. I see. Do you? You might have warned me. You would not have listened. Fair. I do hope you see it now, in all that you have done for us. Anvi, you and the people here have done more for me than I could ever repay. I am honored by your faith in me, and your confidence. As I am honored by your friendship. And I by yours. Eivor, I want you to know that Sigurd and I are... We are severing the bonds of our marriage. We share a love that is steadfast, and I have faith it will forever be so. But it is not the love of a wife and her husband. It was not an easy decision. But after we talked with honesty, we embraced more warmly than we have in a great while. I think we will be happy. I hope so. And I am pleased for you. I am pleased for myself. Sigurd's desires are bigger than any man or woman can offer. He longs for something more. And what about you? What are you looking for? I have all I need right here. With you. With our people.
I'm grateful. So much of our prosperity we owe to you. I hardly know where to begin. You are my truest friend, Ranvi. My right hand. My greatest ally. I give you my word that it will always be so. I'm happiest by your side, and in your company. Shall we find our way back to the wedding? Bridget might give another speech. We must not miss that. About that, I have not understood a single word of hers since Gloucestershire. Really? I find she speaks beautifully. With poetry, even. Are you kidding? Am I? Come, we should go. Godam is dead, nameless and alone across the open sea. A master of the order hewn from the trunk of their dying tree. You are getting closer to the roots. Here you are, Hytham. The last of the order's sigils. You will find King Alfred's among them. King Alfred? Did our poor fellow soldier lead you to his hiding place? He did, for they were one and the same. Our poor fellow soldier of Christ was the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. He turned on his own order. Fascinating. Not turned so much as trampled. His devotion to Christ and what he calls a universal order set him against them from the start. With all sincerity, he loathed the title and the duty he had inherited and wished them destroyed. Wonderful. With his abdication, the last stronghold of the Order has been dismantled. All that remain are scraps here and there, and you. Eivor, now that you have seen our enemy and you understand our cause, I wonder if you would join us. Become a hidden one. Was this your ultimate goal, Hytham? A trial by fire? It is a kind offer, but I do not believe we fight for quite the same cause. Your creed demands that you keep your triumphs hidden. I prefer my glory to be in plain view for all to see. If I taught you our creed, if you spent time with it could open your mind to another view. Another view is always welcome. But to live without celebrating one's glory and honor and achievements is not a life for me. But know this. I would give my life in a moment for those I love and who love me in return. All here. Including you, my friend. I understand you well, Eivor. Very well indeed. Hytham, I have the Codex pages you asked for. Six in total. Ah, wonderful. We have so little writing from the original Hidden Ones. This will grow our understanding immeasurably. These documents may have been inked by the founders of the Hidden Ones, in fact. But their names are unknown to us. Lost to history. A deliberate choice on their part, I think. I'm hoping these documents shed some light on that mystery. I could not say. They're written in a language I do not understand. 
You know, the black market merchant Reda has an old piece of writing from the same era as the codex pages you found. Speak with him if you are curious to see it. Have you brought me anything? Hello there. Reda, Hytham says you have an old piece of writing from the early Hidden Ones. Oh, that old scrap? Yes, it's just a short letter from one Hidden One to another. One of my rarest artifacts. How did it find its way to you? A friend gave it to me for safekeeping. Bayek was his name. Egyptian fellow. Very kind. Haven't seen him in a long time. A very long time. Anyway, the letter is written in Demotic, so it may not mean much to you. But you're free to have a look. Warning, my beloved. I have heard numerous tales now of a secret codex circulating among the acolytes of our bureaus, both within and without the Empire of Augustus, called the Magus Codex. It names you directly as one of the founders of the Hidden Ones. Apart from putting your life in danger, it flies in the face of what we have tried to achieve with our brotherhood. We are justice seekers who shun the light of praise for our good works and who must live in the shadows of our triumphs. Should you see any pages of this Codex, I advise you to destroy them. Keep the dream of our Hidden Ones alive. Now, oh, I am not so naive to think this will be a simple task. Few men and women are suited to keeping such secrets for so long. And it may be that we will fail in the end, but we will have failed in the name of righteousness. Take care, my love. My Iset, my northern star. Even in my waning years, I am ever your Osiris. Let our Horus live on beyond us. I think of you often, my jewel. At sunrise and twilight, at new moon and full, when the rain falls and the breath of a moon rides across my neck, I remember you kissing me. Just there, and I will take that feeling to my tomb. <laughs> 